Hey, where'd you go? It's not just me. <laughs> it's an illusion. Hey, kids. It's Matthew and I from the Slip Angle. Ooh. Yay! We're unboxing this thing right now. Right? Merry Christmas yep. to the Slip Angle. Yes. So, if you saw our first video unveiling our new build here for mm -hmm. the channel, tonight, Matthew and I are taking the liberties. We're going to start unboxing everything. We're going to show you guys what exactly we got, and we're going to start assessing the damage. And we're going to see if this was a huge mistake. <laughs> Drop right. it in the comments right now if yep. you think that this was a terrible mistake on our behalf. All right. Let's dive into Enough this. talking. Let's get this Let's open. get in there. Right from the front. See right. Where was damaged? Oh. You have to bear with us because this thing's super wrapped up. This was a really concerning thing for me. Was the uh, upper shock mount, subframe mounts. Oh, we got a zip tie right here. Yeah, there's lots of zip ties. Yeah, I'm gonna get some snippers. So our sway bar mounts, uh, those broke off. That one broke off. This one is just missing. A little broken. Yeah. You said it was about 10 miles an hour? That's what he says. Yeah. But if you were selling a smashed car, don't you think that you maybe want to downplay it a little bit? Obviously. But we're not scared because we're going to pretend to be fabricators and put our new multi-process welding setup for good use. And we have Mr. Defensive Octopus himself. Yes, Derek, Derek is a new friend. Between the group of us, we're gonna breathe new life. Oh, the there's that carbon fiber APR wing. Look at that carbon, it looks <laughs> cancerous. Is that yes. just clear coat coming off? Oh yes. Maybe this is going to become a matte carbon. <laughs> I've done before. Oh, you it's do. It's doable. It just takes one time. Hey, are my nippers up there? I got more size. Oh yeah, sorry. Oh, excuse me, Matthew. You need a you need a quick bisectomy in this episode. <laughs> I can do. I don't need any more kids. Ooh, fire extinguisher. You sure you don't want a couple more? Oh, I'm good. I'm, good. I'm done with. Cheap, I'm cheap. done with babies. Once they get older, cheap labor. Yeah. Put them all to use, till in the fields. So I was talking to Rudd about this because I noticed it from our video. Uh, this roll bar has an added option. This uh, Rudd only has like a one diagonal bar on his roll bar. This is this is actually uh, got an added bar. All right. So what do you got? do? You think that this will be sufficient when we inevitably roll this thing over? No. Road? No, it no. is not sufficient. We're gonna need a bar to come somewhere from the uh, from around here, or the wiring tray, to connect yep. to the roll bar, and then a crossbar. Can I, can I, can I speak my two shares for one second? Yeah. I know it may be a little reckless, but I think the car looks. It does look better without it. Prettier without that yep. stuff going on in the front. So maybe we don't go off huge jumps until. I, it's like it's like that balance of like safety mm -hmm. or looking cool. <laughs> I think we already have a post of the internet stands on this because they oh yeah, because they're not wearing seatbelts at Lime Rock. That's fine. Dead legs. Kind of. It's pretty light. I know it is actually pretty light. So another option that's in this car that wasn't in Rudd's either is the uh, welded in floor pans. Like we, we riveted on aluminum floor pans for him. So the structurally, this is more rigid. I mean, not that I think the Exocet has a problem with rigidity. I like showing some plumber's cracks. I don't do it. Whoa, oh, there's a fuel tank. What's this, just the fuel tank cover? Yeah, that's just the, the cover. I do like that it comes with a nice dual exhaust. That's it's, pretty cool. Who makes this? Is this an FM? I don't know. I don't know who makes this exhaust. It looks like a one piece too. It looks like a rough one. Yeah, that looks like uh, maybe two and a half inch. Uh, oh, wow, yeah. I don't think Derek would approve of those welds. Derek, what happened here, buddy? Who did this? Yeah, it's like mild steel. Yeah. 
I'm gonna look at the hangers, they're all... Yeah, shot. This uh, sat outside for a while, like what, under a tarp it was? Yeah, it's yeah. no good. Ooh. I wanna so, there's gonna be a lot of rehab going on here. I kinda wanna set this up on a tripod because I wanna get my hands dirty. He said that this uh, the wing was damaged. I want to. I want to look it, at that. The mounts like broke right off. I see two mounts. I mean, I gotta take a look at it, but Matthew, what is behind door number two? Door number two. It's seats. What kind of seats? Corbos, uh, FX ones, I believe. I don't know Corbos very well. I like Corbos. Ooh, we got some five point harnesses. Who are these? Driven. Driven, yeah. Never heard of them. <laughs> oh, they're like still in this. Oh boy. Take a look at these. All right, all right. Not too bad, not too bad. We could work with these. I think these are the same ones Rudd has. Are they? Is, yeah. Oh, we got some uh, brackets underneath them too. Great. Some interesting uh, spacers on that one. Passenger one. Oh, is that it? Well, where the front mounts up? Yeah. Did it rip out? Yep. Oh yeah, look at that. Wonder what that would take to if we can even fix that. I might be able to epoxy the crap out of it. Yeah, Did it rip out though, or is it stripped? Looks like it. You just weld it. Put weld yeah. in there and retap it. Yeah, we'll see. You think you think that's FIA homologation spec? <laughs> I was looking forward to this one because I think this one this one's got a box in it. What's so, behind door number three? I think this is where the turbo bits are. I see okay. a PPF? Should we make a friendly wager on it? Sure. That's got to be turbo bits. So, so if it's turbo bits, I get first drive. Are we even gonna remember that? Again, spray in the face with snow. Um, yeah, Matthew. I don't know. I see a subframe. He's got. He already. This is what I was talking about before. They, these are the spacers. They go in the front. Oh, look at that. So we don't even. That's that's another thing we don't have to get. Oh, yeah, those are I think V Max coilovers. V-Max, isn't that like eBay stuff? Well, Flying Miata sells a V-Max. Oh, Flying Miata, let's not question the Flying Miata guy. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Rudd's uh, V6 has V-Max. Do they? Yep. They, they're, they are normally cheap coilovers, but they work well on Miatas. That car's so well. Yeah. V6 Rear subframe. Moment of truth. Yep. It's gotta be. Oh no. It's in a box. You gonna do the Brad Pitt thing? What's in the box, Lou? I did that on Instagram actually. When I, uh... <laughs> yeah, you did. I saw that. Oh, fail. Ooh, a dip with a broken hanger and broken axle. Oh yeah, boot at least. Ooh, another one. Oh, these axles are cooked. Oh boy. How's the PPF looking? Our plant train looks okay. Yeah. Let's everybody paint it. Got a down pipe here. Yep. Two O2 sensors. And another bump. There's three O2 sensors? What's going on here? Look at this. So many, how many O2s does it oh. take to run a Miata? They probably have the two stock ones. Rhetorical question. Yeah. Two stock ones and then a wide band. band. Yeah. Actually, yeah, that is a wide band sensor right here. Yep. That one looks good though, right? Oh, we can read. oh yeah, I see intercooler pipes. Uh oh. Uh oh, Matthew. Looks like you might have won first drive. Oh, Do I see I... a turbo. I see a compressor housing. At least this is silicone. And it couldn't. Oh, ne I just opened my mouth too soon. It ripped. <laughs> couldn't have broken. Mother. Oh, look at that filter. What's going on here? Wow, that really like broke, huh? Luckily, I got a whole bunch of extra flying Miata turbo parts over here. That's your focus. Sorry. This is the fun stuff. IAT sensor. Yep, IAT. Blow up valve. Yep, turbo smart. The one that it's comes so, in the kit. It's so small. Yeah, that's the one I got in my car. Is it? Yep. Intercooler pipe. 
You know what we can do? What? Since the intercooler was obviously damaged. Yes. And I want to put a different one on my car. Oh, here we go. <laughs> I will. I will. I will donate. Just giving Matthew excuses to buy stuff. Oh, this is like uh, ECU stuff. Oh, those are headlights or something. Fog lights. There's more space in them. Oh, there's a trigger wheel. Oil feed line, back line. Is this the. What is this? Oh, this is a shock mount. Yeah. Oh, these must be the rears. Okay. I thought they were only for the front. Gotcha. Oh well. Okay. Another box. Oh, look at that. Even instructions from the flying the kit. There's the. E that's the standard stock, ECU. BP4WU. But is the. The ECU that it had was what? It was um, the Link ECU from Flying Miata? I thought it was a Hydra. Hydra, that's what it was. Does that just go in the standard case? Well, I know I know on NV from my own, the uh, stock ECU controls the alternator function. Yep. So like, I have an Adaptronics. I have, mine still has the stock ECU plugged in by a guy harness for that same reason. Do not tell me that's the Poodoo box. Did it run off a poodoo box? What's a, what's a poo poo box? That's like the the crappy fuel management. Is that what this turd is? Yeah. Yeah, because it's got a map sensor in it. Yeah, but. Gross. Oh boy. We were lied to. Yeah, I thought we, I thought this thing came with a link or a uh, Hydra. Yeah. Shame, shame, shame. Well, you know what? I'll just go. I'll upgrade to an MS3 in my car. And then we'll just put my MS2 in there. You can't. Oh, I can't. It's, it's, it needs it needs the stock ECU to do the the alternator. alternator. It's all BP4W. We have to figure this out. Well, well we, hurdles we can overcome. That's it. That's what we do around here. Look, we even get a, a mass servo sensor for sale. Yeah, this used that damn poo poo box to uh, help fund our. Oh, what are we going to talk about now? I think I know what you were going to talk about. Hey, that's a turbo. Yeah, not bad. Oh, in Canel hardware with the with the locking hardware, that's good. Mm. That's like a hundred and fifty dollar upgrade, I think. Nice. All right, all right, all right. It's something. It's something. Didn't do the hard lines. Well, good thing you're doing yours. Yeah. <laughs> EGR tube. Song. Yeah. What do we need one of those for? For sale. <laughs> we give w. it to Brian. He keeps breaking them. No, it's different. Oh. That's <laughs> a different location. Why did Miatas ever have to change? Because <sighs> apparently, see, hold on, look, teaching moment. Because the NB is the better Miata than the NA. It is. It's a way better car. Change my mind. I'm not gonna argue. I mean. Change my mind, Matthew. <laughs> I mean, I when I picked up my car. I bought it because it was an old lady selling a Miata, and she sold it to me for Kelly Blue Book value. Like, I get it. In the sense of a Miata, the NA is the more pure one, but when it, turn, when it comes to, like, the better car, the NB is the better car. But the, the NA has that button in the center, in between the uh, two vents. <laughs> so you guys can flash at each other and be like, hello, I'm driving a Miata. You know, Mikey Miata did that all the time. Oh man. I miss Mike. Spice a clip of him for us, would you? Uh, fall, I'm not gonna fall. I'm in an engine bay. Right. Rear subframe. How's that looking? Control arms look good. This is well, this is a hard impact here. Yeah, I mean Although if it broke Oh that's that's supposed to that's designed to break like that. Oh yeah, that's that's by design, but the axle's also broke. But, let's think about this here. Kids, if, you, if the impact is in the front, push the motor back, right? And the that motor, was- and that transmission, was... power plant frame, there's enough of an impact to push the diff back, break the diff housing, uh, the ears or whatever, and then snap the axles. But, that doesn't necessarily put a whole lot of stress on the subframe itself. Right, because this took most of the impact right here. That cushioned the initial blow. Yep. 
yep. at, the, at the design breaking point. You know, it's actually possible this subframe may be okay and straight. Um, I mean, wouldn't we, if, if we, if there was damage to the subframe, this looks like it could have been like a weak point right here. But at the same time, it's like a, a rear subframe for a Miata is like 50 bucks. Yeah, that's true too. We could just talk bucks. to Joe Wall. Yeah, we'll just hit up Santa Claus Miata, man, Joe Wall. Get a new front and rear subframe. But here's the thing though. BP4W actually has a little bit revised geometry because it's the better car. So, you know, do we want to do like for like? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Decisions, decisions. Rudd bought a wrecked uh, NB. Maybe he has a rear subframe. Oh, we'll hit him up. Yeah. Okay. He'll be over next time. We'll be back with uh, door number four. Yeah, turbo cars don't like two-inch exhausts. <laughs> Or, cat. or cats. Or steel piping with us. Or <laughs> poodoo boxes. We got door number four. Door number four. I'm working on it. Oh, I see a red valve cover. Type R, son. Oh, the water neck broke off. Yeah, so did the, the front crank plate. Oh, find me out of clutch. This has seen better days. Uh, it's a little WD-40. Yeah. Right on the friction plate. <laughs> yeah, perfect. <laughs> I loosened it right up. <laughs> <laughs> Wants to see something disgusting. Touch that, you'll get AIDS. Uh, now you have AIDS. Well, you got our work cut out. <laughs> yeah, I was just gonna say, what are you thinking about all this? I mean, instant regret. No. You know, it's it is what it is. We have we have a foundation here for a build, and it's gonna kind of put all the years of us mucking around with cars to the test, right? Yep. This is really like diving into a mess. Uh, gone in 60 seconds. A little bit of hard work. She'll be a streamlined butterfly. <laughs> you gotta make the noise he makes too. The <laughs> he does something stupid. It's been so long since I've watched the movie. I just like remember that reference. But... Alright. That's it for this one, boys and girls. Stay tuned for the next episode. We're gonna start cleaning everything. And check out our webinars on slipanglemedia.com. We're giving away awesome tuner parts with great odds. There's no restrictions to how many seats you can buy and you get to support the channel and help us out. We're not asking for subscriptions or Patreon mm -hmm. and you get some one-on-one -on -one time with me and the boys and watch us make fools of ourselves. So check them out. See you guys next time. Done. <laughs>